It, prime, to the Prime Minister, does he stand by all his recent statements? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, yes. The Leader of the Opposition. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Does he stand by a statement at the Jobs Summit three years ago this week that, quote, I don't want to spend much time talking about how difficult economic conditions are at the moment. I'm here to do something about it. And is he aware that there are now 53,000 more unemployed in New Zealand? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, I'm not entirely sure I'd say three years ago is recent because I've gone through about three Labor leaders since then. But anyway, um, <coughs> but putting that all to uh, one side, the country has gone through like the rest of the world. And one never knows when another one's coming along. It's like a bus. You know, you just wait there long enough and they turn up. Look at Mr Cudlip, he's order. just waiting. Order. Now order. Is the minister getting short-sighted? Because she knows I'm on my feet and there will be silence. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Sorry, Mr Speaker. So the, the, the member will be aware that the world has gone through the worst recession since the Global Depression. Um, I think if you look at the New Zealand economy that has grown in nine of the last ten quarters, has an anticipated faster growth rate than both the UK, the European Union, the United States. I'm not saying things are perfect in New Zealand, but I would argue that we're in a lot better shape than most other countries. Before I, before I call the Leader of the Opposition, I accept that part of the first part of the answer was provocative and is bound to lead to interjections, but where the Leader of the Opposition is asking serious questions, I would ask his own colleagues to be a little reasonable on the interjections. The Leader of the Opposition. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Um, does he stand by his statement that, quote, there are plenty of jobs out there for people if they look really hard, and are there plenty of jobs for Carolyn Yentz, with two bachelor's degrees and a master's in speech therapy, who says... It seems like this is just not the year for getting jobs, and I'm looking everywhere, all over New Zealand, and there's just nothing there. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Well, Mr Speaker, I stand by my full statement, which I actually read out in the House yesterday and was quite comprehensive, but I also stand by the statement I also made in the House yesterday, that if one looks at the ANZ jobs report, there are currently 30,000 jobs being advertised. I think Trade Me has over 10,000 jobs being advertised. If one looks at um, the work and income, there are about 1,300 to 1,500 vacancies a week being advertised. There are around 3,500 on the books at any one time, and 80,000 people went off the benefit into work last year. And I tell you what, it's no wonder Trevor Mallard's got a loud voice, because when you're trying to scalp tickets, you want people to make sure you know where you are. The Leader of the Opposition. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Does he, does he stand by his statement that, quote, I, for one, would rather invest your taxes and jobs for our young people than in unemployment benefits when there has been a sevenfold increase in youth on long-term unemployment benefits since he became Prime Minister. The Right Honourable well, Prime well, Minister. Mr Speaker, the, the, whole, uh, the first thing I think we need to acknowledge is when there is a global recession, those that are order, most... Order, I apologise to the Prime Minister, but I presume the questions from the Leader of the Opposition are serious and his own senior colleagues should respect their leader. The Right Honourable Prime Mr. Minister. Speaker, Mr Speaker, as I've said before, if one looks at a global recession, and one, what one recognises is that those who are most disproportionately affected are always lower skilled and younger people. Um, so that has been the same pattern here in New Zealand over the last three or four years. It's also true in every other developed country around the world. It's also true the government's been working very hard on making sure those young people have training and skills. And the very purpose of the changes that we are making in our welfare reforms are to target those 16 and 17 year olds, I assume the member's talking about, to wrap around a provider around them to make sure they're in training or in um, some sort of opportunity to get into work so they don't go on a benefit. And I would thought that the member would want to come over on this side of the House and actually congratulate us for doing something about it. The Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, thank you, Mr. Speaker. When he made his statement, quote, our government campaigned on a jobs and growth plan for New Zealand, did he consult his finance minister, whose opinion of the job market is that it is what it is? Yep. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. <coughs> well, uh, I, 
I had consulted the Minister of Finance, and while I was consulting him, I also thanked him for his economic leadership. We are nine of the last ten quarters this country grew, where 62,000 people uh, got create, had jobs created in the last two years. And actually, the Minister of Finance is right. What creates jobs in this country is when the right incentives are there to invest, when people think they, they can make a return and when they feel that the government isn't going to overload them with costs and regulation. And quite frankly, that's been the ethos of this government, unwinding the mess we inherited after nine years of labour. The Leader of the Opposition. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Does he stand by his statement that he expects high standards from his ministers and he will take action if necessary? And why hasn't he insisted on high standards from Minister McCulley who was laying off 300 of his ministry's staff, while at the same time building a swimming pool in one of his embassies. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, a couple of things. Firstly, um, the member should know that staffing responsibility is a matter for the Chief Executive. It's not a matter for the Minister, it's a matter for the Chief Executive. Secondly, I can assure the member, as I can assure New Zealanders, that the, the Minister has made it quite clear the Minister has made it quite clear to the Chief Executive that his expectations are that in this time where the, uh, the Ministry is going through restructuring, spending it should only take place in areas of capital investment where it's absolutely necessary, like Beijing, where there is some work going on there. That edict was um, delivered by the Minister, I understand, quite some months ago. The Right Honourable Winston Peters. Does that mean that Minister McCulley will not be going to the budget round with Treasury on next year's budget, uh, this year's budget, and that he will send the chief of his uh, staff to, along to, in his, his stead. Yes. The right honourable prime minister. Well, I'm not sure how the member did it when he was the minister, but I'm sure the minister will turn up with his chief executive. Question number two, Simon Bridges. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.